IUI or intrauterine insemination is one of the first line of treatments in fertility treatment. It's just one step more than a natural sexual activity wherein couples are trying for a pregnancy. Now, IUI just literally means putting the sperms inside the uterus. What are the benefits of this procedure? Basically, by inserting the sperms inside the uterus, we are increasing the number of sperms that get into the uterus and also we are reducing the distance between an egg and a sperm. In simple terms, if we have to understand the female reproductive system, every lady has a uterus, there are two tubes and there are two ovaries. Women form eggs and eggs come from the ovary. Usually one egg forms every month and this forms around the 15th day for a lady who has a cycle of about 28 to 30 days frequency. Now when the egg develops here, it is picked up by the fallopian tube or the ov duct. Natural sexual activity, sperms fall here in the vagina and sperms are expected to go through the uterus, through the tube, reach the egg here, form an embryo and then the embryo slides back into the uterus, sits here and grows here for 9 months. That is how a pregnancy happens and is carried. In this part is called as a uterus. Now, intrauterine insemination is wherein a washed sperm or a more concentrated motile sperms segregated from the semen are put here inside the uterine cavity. The idea is the distance sperms have to travel is lesser. More number of sperms come inside, your chances double up. So naturally, if it's around a 8 to 10 percent pregnancy rate in a natural sexual activity per month, in an IUI it can be as high as 15 to 20 percent per month. And IUI is considered as the first line since its inception somewhere in the mid 20th century when the first IUI happened or was considered as a fertility treatment. It has been a very popular choice because it is least invasive, not many medications and it enhances the chances more than a natural sexual activity. So let's take it one by one. The first indication would be an unexplained infertility. That is, if a couple have tried one year unprotected sexual activity and have not achieved a conception, there are a few tests the doctor might recommend. This would be in the form of hormonal tests for the lady, a tubal assessment because tubal function is a very important for an IUI successful IUI outcome. So if the tubal test is normal, if the sperm factor is normal, then the first step of treatment becomes an IUI, wherein you monitor when the lady is forming an egg and this husband's sperms are put inside the uterus. That's the first indication. The other indications are anovulatory infertility. Suppose the lady has polycystic ovarian syndrome wherein ovulation is not regular, the doctor may prescribe some medications for egg formation and along with the egg formation, one can consider an intrauterine insemination or an IUI to enhance their chances of conception. The other indications are borderline male factor infertility. Now, suppose the sperm analysis shows a minor abnormality of motility or morphology or the count in such situation wherein we call it as borderline abnormality in the semen parameters. In such situation, putting the sperms inside the uterus enhances their chances basically because you are concentrating the semen, collecting all the normal sperms or rather most motile sperms and inseminating inside the uterus can optimize their chances of achieving a conception. The other indications are endometriosis. If the wife is suffering from a condition called as endometriosis, it's a condition wherein the endometrium or the lining of the uterus can start growing inside the ovaries which results in endometriotic cysts. Now, this condition is again staged as stage 1, 2, 3 or 4, especially in stage 1 and 2 where there is mild to moderate endometriosis. In such situations, again, IUI can be attempted to achieve a conception provided the tubal functions are good. The other important condition is absolute male factor infertility wherein if a gentleman is not forming sperms at all and the treatment becomes a donor insemination wherein they are adopting a sperm to achieve a conception, in such situations IUI is considered as a first option to achieve a pregnancy. Coming to the process of IUI, how does a typical IUI cycle look? Usually at the first visit with a doctor, the doctor would suggest some tests for both for the gentleman and the lady. This is to identify if they have any infections like infection screening for both husband and wife to rule out common sexually transmitted diseases. The next thing would be some hormonal assessment for the wife to make sure that she is not having any hypo or hyperthyroidism to ensure that prolactin levels are normal and also to make sure that her AMH levels are good, that means her fertility reserve is good. Once the baseline tests are found to be normal for the lady and the sperm analysis is showing good number of sperms, either a normal serum and parameter or a borderline abnormality, the next test would be something called as a fallopian tube testing. So it's important to ascertain prior to IUI that 
both the fallopian tubes are patent by patent i mean that they are open and not blocked see we need to understand that in iui we are putting the sperms inside the uterus and we are hoping for the egg to travel through the tube into the uterus for that tubal function is extremely important so prior to going ahead with iui fallopian tube test is considered as an essential step now fallopian tube test can be done in various ways one among them is sonosalpingogram which is an ultrasound based test when in a uh, saline is passed through the uterus and seen whether it is flowing appropriately through the tubes so the flow of the fluid through the tubes helps us ascertain that the tubes are good and open the other test is called as hst which is an alternative to sonosalpingogram which is called as hysterosalpingogram now that is an x ray based test wherein on a x ray we see if a radio opaque dye passes through the uterus through the tube and flows out this helps us again ascertain that the tubes are patent the third and the last test however which is considered as a gold standard is a hysterolaparoscopy a laparoscopy is a keyhole surgery where you know a few small holes are made on the abdomen of the lady and the uterus is checked for in real time as to whether uterus is fine tubes are fine and if they are patent however most often we may not need to consider laparoscopy just for testing the tubes usually a solo salpingogram or a hsd should be sufficient to ascertain that tubes are okay now once we ascertain that the tubes are good the lady's blood tests are fine and the man's sperm is fine iui cycle can be planned now usually a iui treatment takes about 15 days from the second day of the menstrual cycle it may need about 2 to 3 visits to the hospital to undergo some monitoring that is track the egg development the first visit would be on the second day of the menstrual cycle for the lady now second day there would be a scan that will help us determine that the ovaries are baseline there are no cysts in the ovaries the endometrium has shed well and then the tracking of the egg development is planned now why we are doing this again iui can be planned with either natural cycle wherein we just track the natural egg development and plan the iui or it could be with some ovulation induction agents which means if the lady is an ovulatory that is she is not forming eggs properly then we may consider taking some oral medications to form the eggs or it could be with super ovulation by super ovulation what i mean is sometimes what we do is we give some tablets plus injections to try and make sure that two or three eggs develop see what we need to understand is that naturally only one egg develops by doing a super ovulation when we make the lady form two or three the chances also increase because the concentration of the gametes is more during the time of ovulation but at a risk of twin pregnancy so we need to keep in mind that if we are considering a super ovulation or medications to form more eggs then the risk of twin pregnancy also increases so once we do this that is once we are giving the lady some medications to form eggs we usually again check for egg development which might include two or three scans between the day 2 to the day 15 of the third cycle and when the follicle gets ready follicle is a structure that has the egg in it and this can be tracked on an ultrasound when do we say that the egg is ready when the follicle is approximately about 18 to 20 mm size and endometrium that is a lining of the uterus which has developed very beautifully to a 8 to 10 mm thickness and it is tri- lamina this is how we describe the lining and the follicle so once this gets ready is when we plan for the final injection which is called as the trigger trigger injection is the injection that causes the egg to release usually 36 hours from the time of the trigger is when the egg releases and usually the iui is timed either at 36 hours at the time of egg release or it can also be done twice that is prior to egg release and after egg release now policies across clinics around the world can change some clinics do a single insemination some clinics to a double insemination and usually male factor infertility and in endometriosis double insemination is the norm even otherwise it depends on the clinical practices at each place as to what gives them the best success rate so at aspire we usually do a double insemination once prior to the egg release and once after egg release and once this is done usually the pregnancy test will come around 15 days post iui that is when the doctor will be suggesting for a blood test or a urine test to detect if pregnancy has ensued post the treatment During the treatment cycle when the lady is coming in for scans and all one can expect that you know the whole process of consultation and scan can take approximately about 30 minutes but on the day of IUI when the procedure is planned it may take up to 2 to 3 hours so once the sample is furnished to the lab it usually takes about an hour or two for the processing to be done now what is semen processing semen processing is the method wherein we centrifuge the semen first and then keep a culture media above it only the sperms that swim and come to the topmost 
layer as selected for insemination. Now, this processing can happen in various ways. There are some techniques called as swim up techniques, there are techniques called as density gradient, and in recently we have had more advanced ways of processing called as MAX. It is magnetic assisted cell sorting which helps in identifying sperms which are not fragmented so it gives us a pool of sperms which do not have any fragmentation so chances can be better but however when we are using more advanced techniques we need to keep in mind the cost of the procedure may go high but the benefits are not yet established there is one other technique which is now becoming popular which is microfluidic procedure wherein when you pass the semen sample in a channel only the sperms that come away from a linear line and take a detour as the most normal sperms and are found to have less fragmentation in them. So microfluidics is also one of the ways wherein we can process a semen sample for IUI. So adopting the higher technology for semen processing can add cost to the procedure but however whether it enhances success rate it is something to be you know we have to wait and watch so this processing procedure may take approximately one to two hours on the iui day so effectively couples should keep at least three hours in hand when they come in for the iui procedure iui process itself is usually pain free but however some women may find even transvaginal scans painful so if a person feels that the scans are painful then they could consider doing the iui under anesthesia so if they do it under anesthesia, it becomes a daycare procedure. They come in the morning and possibly by afternoon or evening, they should be able to go back home.